Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to the channel. You know it's your boy Anime King and today I'm gonna be giving you part 6 of what if Naruto went dark. I'm gonna be giving you part 6 today guys. You guys destroy the light goal I throw at you. So today the light goal is gonna be 320. Get this one to over 320 likes and you'll be getting the next part as soon as possible. And share this video to all your friends on your social media platform. Yeah. So comment down below and tell me what you think of this episode. Without further ado, let's get straight into it. Start the intro. So I'm gonna be creating a playlist, there's already a playlist up so you guys can check out all of the other parts. So last time I left off, Naruto and Team 7, they faced off again Zabuza and they completely wrecked him. Naruto was going completely psychopath, he was extending his claws and he wants to rip Zabuza to pieces but Kurama told Naruto that it wasn't the time for that so he calmed down. After they beat Zabuza, a mass shinobi came there and took Zabuza away, telling them that he's been searching for Zabuza for a long time. Naruto met the bridge builder's daughter and he talked to her and she knew everything about Naruto's past because he quickly explained everything to her, but she told him that he was still a good person and Naruto wanted to rebuild the wave country and take over, but Gato is in his way. So let's get straight in this part. Naruto was thinking about what Tazunami said to start to give the people of Wave hope to evolve and become a better village. They all should be fed and the buildings should be repaired. Naruto started thinking, let's start with food first. But where could I get food for 500 people? Naruto thought. Then Naruto smell the smell of wild hog in the ear. Getting a good sniff of the area, Naruto could tell that there were a lot of them, but they were spread out. Naruto got a dangerous smile on his face as he extended his claws, ready to go and hunt. Let's get to work, shall we? And he headed off to the forest. On another side of the forest, Kakashi brought Sasuke and Sakura out to the forest to talk about a couple of things that he noticed in the group. He couldn't find Naruto so he had to settle with these two. Alright you two, where did you learn those moves where you use on the walk to Konoha to wave? Because Kakashi wanted to know how they suddenly get so powerful. Sasuke and Sakura started to sweat real bad. Naruto told them that if they told people that they were training under him, bad things will happen. Just thinking about what Naruto said made the two scared. With some quick thinking, Sasuke started first. I've been training for some years in my clan jutsus. Although I only have a small amount of jutsus and they are only high D rank, said a sweating Sasuke. Hmm, good enough. Good job Sasuke, you're turning into an exceptional shinobi. Then he turned to Sakura, what about you Miss Runo? Well, I've been training with Ino's clan, she said. Oh really? For how long? said a curious Kakashi. Not too long really, only like a month before the academy exam. The only jutsu I learned was my mud wall technique and I build my chakra control massively within as well. She explained to Kakashi. Oh, that explains that. I just wanted to know that you two are taking your time in your training 
and not rushing yourself. After all, you two are still kids. You have a lot of time to get stronger. For now, you should enjoy your golden ears while you still have them anyway. Well, I'm going back to the bridge with Azuna, he said and disappearing in a body flicker jutsu. Thank god that's over with, said Sakura as she sat down on the ground. Yeah, we couldn't let Kakashi find out about the training we have been doing. Or we will suffer by Naruto's wrath, he said while shaking about thinking when Naruto beat the both of them. Yeah, I wouldn't want to go through that again, said Sakura. While the both of them looked up at the blue clear skies, two hours later, in the wave town square, a line of shadow clones, Naruto Clay created lots of shadow clones walking in the middle of the wave country. He had all kind of dead animals with him. He killed wild hogs, deer, rabbit, almost anything he could find in the forest. He brought them back with him and he brought lots of firewoods and some kindles to burn while they cook. He also made plates from the stones that came out of the river. The water cleaned the stones of any germs or anything on them. Naruto sit down in the middle of the town and start to build a large fire starting to cook everything he had killed. Everyone started to close in. What is that kid doing? The villagers asked. I don't know another villager said but damn that stuff smell real good. Soon a whole circle was around Naruto and his clones. The villagers started to come in one by one. Then Naruto took out a marker out of his pouch, got some wood that he chopped like a board and write if you want delicious food get in line. As soon as the people read it they got into a straight line and Naruto started to serve them. This went on for a few hours. People who hadn't had food in days now stuffed with meat in their stomach with rations to spear them for the whole week. Naruto got a lot of animals. People started to smile and laugh and talking amongst each other. Which hasn't happened in a long time. Kids are even playing around the streets which they didn't do often. Not since a long time ago. Naruto looked at everyone so happy and he frowned. What is this feeling I have? It feels so foreign to me. I cannot describe it. He thought. Then the people start to thank him and saying that this was like a dream to them. They never thought that someone would do this for them. One of the older women came up to Naruto. Excuse me boy, what is your name? She said. He turned to the woman and said, my name is Naruto. Ah, Naruto, you're such a good boy for doing this. And I thank you from the bottom of my heart, she said. The villagers started to cheer his name, Naruto, Naruto, Naruto. Naruto's eyes widened when he hear this. A good boy? He said in his mind as he think back to what Tuzunami said to him that he was a really good boy. He replayed it, that in his head over and over again what she said to him. Naruto you're really a good boy, you just been hurt for so long that you don't open up and trust anyone anymore. He started to breathe every and every then. The more he think about it because he was getting conflicted. But Kurama told me that I was supposed to be evil and fit in her image and become a good mate, a good demon. But Tazunami told me that I was a good boy. So is Kurama-chan wrong? What? Who must I listen to? Meanwhile, Kurama was listening to Naruto's thoughts and she didn't like them, not one bit. Kasunami, that damn woman, what is she trying to do to Naruto? I swear if she filled him with this thought of helping people and actually acting like a real human, he might lose the love he secretly hold for me and go to her instead. Thought a very worried Kurama, thinking that she was going to lose Naruto. She was going to have to do something about Tozunami very quickly. 
to me now to forget about what she said to him. I will make my move tonight and handle the situation as quietly as I can, she said with a smirk on her face. Back to the middle of the wave country, the people were so happy and eating and partying that they didn't notice that three of Gato's men came there with blade in their hand. What is going on here? said the thug in the middle, most likely the leader of the other two. It got dead quiet as the thugs walked around the people who haven't said anything yet. Then they noticed the food that everyone was eating. He grabbed a plate and raised it in the air. Who is responsible for this? He asked again but got no reply. So no one know? He said as he started to tighten his sword more, scaring a few people. I did this. A voice said, the thugs didn't recognize who that was. They started to look around for the owner of the voice. Then they heard the voice again, down here, and when they looked down, they saw Naruto with a rabbit foot sticking out of his mouth, freshly cooked. The thugs didn't see Naruto because how small he was. Even Kurama couldn't understand why Naruto was still only 4 feet 11. He hadn't had his growth spurt yet. The thugs looked at Naruto and started to laugh at him. It was hilarious to think that this little kid could have done this. Why do you laugh? Naruto asked them. There is no way a little pathetic little boy did this. The boss thug said. Then he did something that sealed his fate. He put away his sword and spit into Naruto's face. It was sliding down his cheek almost touching his hoodie, his precious hoodie. Kurama saw all of this and said, what did he just did? Kill him Naruto, rip him to shreds, Kurama very angry. Faster than they anyone could see, red chains came from Naruto's back, wrapped around the three thug's stomach, and he started to squeeze them with much force. He broke all of their ribs. The thugs then were slammed into the ground, making them scream even louder. Naruto then wiped the spit off him, then laid out some cool knives. I will let the villagers take care of you. And he walked away. The citizens grabbed the kunai and started to smile while slowly walking up to the thugs who were crying out in pain. Naruto then asked around for a builder of houses, which he found. They talk and Naruto said that he will offer his services to help the man build the houses that were almost ready to fall. That made the man very happy that someone would help him. And Naruto had the multi on Jutsu so there would be a lot of help. Naruto headed back to Tazuna's house after that. Tazuna's house, it's now dinner time. Everyone was eating around the table. Kazuna may make a big feast because Naruto brought two deers that he helped her skin. The food is good, Tazuna me, said Tazuna as he ate with three meals in front of him. Thank you, father, but you really must thank Naruto because this was all he's doing. Going and catching the food and plus helping me prepare it. She said with a smile towards Naruto. How did you do it Naruto? asked a very full Kakashi. Naruto then held up his hand and showed Kakashi his longer than average nails. My nails are stronger than steel. They could cut through skin and flesh easily. Everyone was happy because Naruto went out and catch the dinner. Everyone was sitting around the table laughing and enjoying the food. But there was one person who was not happy. Why do you care what happened to us? The person said, when everyone looked around, it was the bridge builder grandson, Inari. The table began, it was dead quiet now. No one was laughing anymore. Inari, stop that, said his mother. No, I don't understand why they came here. They said they came here to protect grandpa. But I know they are only in it for the money. These people don't know of our suffering. Suffering living in those big ninja villages where they're all nice protected and well fed while we 
here deal with people like Gato. Gato would just come and kill them when he wants to anyway, said Inari. Inari, stop! They aren't here for money. They truly care about us. Why would Naruto do this if he didn't care about us? Said Tatsunami. Inari then pointed his finger at Naruto who wasn't even listening to the conversation. He was busy enjoying his rabbit stew. For some reason, he enjoyed rabbit. Rabbit meat or rabbit stew, he enjoyed that for some reason. Naruto felt his rabbit stew was more important than listening to that conversation. Inari then started to scream. He is the worst of them all. He first came into this house with no emotion at all. I heard what you did in town today, but what you did won't last. When you leave, that hope you give them will go back down and everything will go back to the same way it was. Wave, wave looking like a dead wasteland. Only to see that Naruto is still eating, not paying him any mind. Are you listening to me? Inari yelled. Naruto took a deep breath and put his spoon down, turned his head to look at Inari. Naruto's eyes were now flashing red. You are annoying, you know that? I wish I could hear you so I could continue to eat. But it's seeing that you won't let this go. He then stood up and walked over to Inari, bending down and looking right into Inari's eyes. The reason I gave all those people food today because your mother tell me that it's a good way to give them hope. That hope will give them the necessary strength to rebel against Gato. Strength they don't seem to have now. Next, I shall start rebuilding the broken house. That seems to be the most broken in the way the houses next to the peoples. And then I will remove Gato's head from his body, said Naruto, surprising everyone in the room. Wait, what did you say a while ago? asked Inari. Oh, I will kill Gato and everything has to do with him. That is my plan to free the wave. You say that I don't care about wave. But I already done more than anyone has including you. All you do is cry upstairs hoping that something will change. Someone can help. But now that I'm here, you curse my name. Said Naruto as he got right into Inari's face, scaring him in the process. You also said that I do not know what suffering is. Do you know how it feels to be betrayed by your family? Your father sealing a demon inside of you. Or how it feels to be beaten every day by the villagers in your own village to the age at six. How it feels to be stabbed, beaten with poles and stick. Anything that could cause pain. How about eating from the garbage and sleeping behind the news behind the dumpster with a newspaper for a blanket? How about living in a cell? without seeing sunlight for two years or to be mentally tortured by the same demon your father sealed inside of you. Huh? Do you understand my pain? Can you comprehend how insane I really am? Naruto started to yell as his fangs started to grow longer and his eyes started to flashing even more. There was an insane smile on his face. This same time, Naruto back Inari in a wall Releasing his key that froze Kakashi in the place, he couldn't even move. Kakashi was really terrified there was a deadly key that won't let him get up or anything. So why aren't you talking boy? I told you the difference between you and me. My own family and village members hurt me all of my life. But the thing is, I got them back. I killed a mob. There was about 55 people and I ripped them all to shreds and smiled while I did it. It felt good to feel all of their bloods on my nails. But you on the other hand, cry over a picture of your dead father, not changing a thing. So what I want you to do is that exact thing. Go run away and cry. Naruto said with a smile on his face. He backed away to give Inari room. And as soon as he did, he ran straight upstairs, crying. 
Naruto saw this and started to laugh, scaring everyone with such a creepy laugh. He then got the rest of his soup, drink it and left out the house. Not before saying, time to start the second step and then he left the house. But guys I'm gonna end right here, if you want to see the next part of this, you know what to do. I know you see a like button and I know you guys see that subscribe button. So you already know what to do, like, subscribe and that comment down button down below. Turn on the bell notification so you can see when exactly when I post. And yeah, thank you for watching the video and get this one past the 320 likes. Yeah, and you get the next part as soon as possible. For now, I'm out. Peace.